I have an acoustic guitar I could bring out and do a little medley like, hello. <laughs> My name is Eric Ryla, Senior Vice President of Business Development here at Actaris, and thank you for spending a few minutes with us here today to get an overview of our revolutionary XPMA platform. First, let me walk you through a very brief diagram of the Actaris platform. What we do, in, essentially, is we bring in source data from source systems, and this can be data that is relevant to the organization from a financial planning perspective, HR planning, sales planning, any sort of data that is relevant to our clients that they want to then strategically report on and interact with, we bring that information into a consolidated staging layer SQL environment. And then using the very common and adopted tools of Power BI, Excel, PowerPoint, the Microsoft stack in general, our users are then able to use those tools to not only interact, report, and visualize the information in that environment, but we, with through Actaris, are allowing that right back capability to that consolidated environment. The use cases are virtually endless and we would encourage you to take a look at the case studies on our website to see exactly how clients have already deployed this technology in a variety of different ways to solve business challenges. In essence, what we've done is our technology has allowed Power BI and the Microsoft Stack to not only be a visualization and reporting tool, but to also activate bi-directional communication to that centralized database where now you can use those tools to actually input information back into that consolidated environment, really opening up the possibility to solve a number of different business challenges throughout the organization. So now that we've seen a slide of the ecosystem behind our technology, now what you are looking at obviously is a Power BI environment with our Actaris visual planted here in the middle. I'm gonna go ahead and go into full screen mode so that we can work directly with our proprietary visual. And as what you can see here, we have a landing page of sorts, which really is designed to demonstrate the different types of planning capabilities you can accomplish with the Actaris platform. For example, depending on those source systems feeding that consolidated staging layer database, we can do financial planning, operational planning, sales planning, HR planning, the possibilities are endless. It's just a matter of what information is required to do this strategic analysis, and then we're bringing that bi-directional technology to the table. So let me start first with demonstrating how even this first screen with a few key KPIs and this navigational pane can even be quickly transferred into a workflow status screen. So here within this screen, you will see not only these same uh, navigational panes with where you can navigate towards, but now you're able to see how complete your data is across each of these components. So for example, from a financial planning perspective, from one quick glance, I can understand how complete the information is. As you can see, 25% of my entities have not even started to report their information, all the way to 50% being submitted. A very nice, quick way to understand how complete and accurate the information is that you're looking at. So let's kind of go back to our navigational component here. And the first thing I'm going to do is drive and dive into financial planning. Now here within the financial planning component of our platform, you can see again, some visuals here that's visualizing the information in that consolidated environment. Some KPIs on revenue, on expenses, over here to the right, you see pretty much a GL accounts listed here in terms of prior year actuals, the actuals currently, the base, the target that we're looking at. You can see up across the top here, we can also slice this information through the slicers. So whether it's by entity or division, whether it's by department, and I'm currently comparing my actuals to my budget, but I also have other scenarios in here, forecasts, plans, scenarios, you name it, these can all be uh, cross-referenced against your actuals and also generated directly within the system, which I'll show you here shortly. Now, what I'm going to do within this report is quickly to show you the power of the write-back capability that Actaris brings to Power BI, is down here, I'm going to click on Edit Mode. And this immediately will transfer my report into an input mechanism. And the first input mechanism that we're going to demonstrate for you here today is, a, is simply called a matrix input visual. Here, what you're looking at is a very similar looking environment in terms of an Excel spreadsheet or Power BI matrix report that is giving you some GL accounts begin on the left and time periods across the top with, of course, your base and your target compared to each other side by side. 
Now, if I want to simply input information into this report, I click on the edit button here in the top left-hand corner, and then I can go into any part of this report. Granted, I have permissions to do so. And let's say I want to increase my interest income and just simply type in a new value. It's as simple as that. All I've done is simply input information into this report and I can write it back to the centralized database where it will be uh, consolidated in that environment. Now, it's not just that simple. I can also right click here, revert back to my original value. I can right click and add commentary to this data point and it's not stored locally. Again, the commentary is stored at the database level at the intersection of this data. So again, just a very simple example of how I could come into this environment and input information. We've even developed some simple shortcuts that allow for rapid data entry in the sense of, for example, I want to increase my intercompany sales by 10%. Well, it's as simple as typing in I, 10%, hitting enter, and that value changes accordingly. Another useful shortcut is the letter R. With the number past, a number following the letter R, and sure enough, I've now populated that number across every time period in this, in this row. Very useful in driver-based planning, for example. What I'm going to do now is introduce another input visual. So if I convert this now from full screen edit mode to workflow management mode, we're now gonna introduce the second input visual that we've created for this environment, and it's a table input visual. So for example, in this particular use case, I'm going to be using it for a workflow status. So once again, I have my grid up here at the top. And if you notice down here in the bottom left, let's pretend that we're Australia. And we have not even started to input the information needed to roll up to our finance team. So I come into this environment. Once again, I'm going to click on edit. And through the matrix visual, I am going to increase this value by 20%. That is the information that's needed for my team. So now I'm gonna come down here into the bottom right hand corner, and this is where I'm going to use my table edit visual because as Australia, I am going to now say that I have submitted my information. This will now trigger an email to my manager. My manager will now come into this exact same environment. He will then see the information that I've updated. He can right click here. He can add some commentary, again, stored at the database level. And then once he's done and he's happy with the situation, he's gonna come in here and he's gonna change the workflow status to approved. This is how we can use the table edit visual in this particular case to update workflow statuses, but certainly could be used to update any component of the database depending on how the user wants to use this feature. Next, I'm gonna introduce a third input visual here from the same screen and it's called the copy wizard. So in this particular case, I'm not inputting a specific piece of data. I'm not updating a particular piece of data using the table edit visual, but now I wanna create a brand new scenario within my consolidated environment. So first what I'm gonna do is down here in the bottom left-hand corner is I want to create at least a placeholder for my new scenario. So I click on the plus sign and I'm gonna type in budget one, two, three. All this is doing is creating a blank placeholder within the database that is now ready for me to start populating with information. Well, how can I do that quickly and efficiently? Well, I can do that first by copying information from an existing scenario, actual forecast, etc. So over here on the right, I'm simply gonna click on the plus sign. I'm gonna tell this input visual that I wanna create a brand new scenario. And I'm going to do so by simply copying from my actuals in this case. And I want to populate this budget one, two, three that I have already created. And now I'm going to populate that new scenario with a copy of all the actuals that I already have within that database, giving me a brand new scenario and quote unquote playground with which I can start manipulating that information. For the next input visual that I'm going to show you, I have switched to the driver planning component of this platform. So again, in this case, we're using driver-based planning, but irrelevant in terms of how we can actually utilize these input visuals. In this case, I'm gonna demonstrate our graphic visual input mechanism. So what you're seeing here is a driver-based planning screen. In this case, we're seeing a list of product SKUs. We have drivers of quantity, price, and cost here at the top. 
and obviously all the calculations and metrics to uh, generating these KPIs. But in this case over here on the right, I have a graph that shows a dark line of my actuals and the light colored line is my forecast, my budget, my plan, whatever it might be. So once again, I can convert this into edit mode by clicking right here. And now I'm able to manipulate the information graphically by simply grabbing a data point and saying, we're not gonna do so hot this month. And maybe we're not gonna do so hot this month, but we're gonna do a lot better over here. All I'm doing here is manipulating again the information. It's not, I'm not inputting the data. I'm not changing it in a table. I'm not creating a brand new scenario, but I am able to manipulate it graphically by simply dragging and dropping these data points within the graphic visual. As you can see, my total of 18.5 has changed as I manipulate this information, demonstrating the calculations behind the scenes. But even better, if I wanna actually lock this total down, let's pretend I cannot produce more or less than 17 and a half thousand units, no matter how well I do in a given period, I can lock that value. And now you notice this 2.4K sitting up here, as I increase a different time period, it is going to recalculate each data point to ensure that my 17.5 total remains intact. Just to demonstrate again how the calculations behind the scenes can be used to really segregate and then splash all of my calculations across a unified total. So if you have any challenges that you'd like to discuss with us today around manual reporting headaches, please reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to collaborate and find a way to make this technology work for your organization.